Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew was a stark, unflinching reality TV show that documented stars' struggles with addictions. Sadly, a number of the cast members have since died, many as a direct result of their illness or continued drug use. Here are the stars from the show who have passed away. In June 1978, Grease hit movie theaters and became the highest-grossing movie of the year, with Jeff Conaway co-starring as 1950s high school bad boy Kanicki. Three months later, Taxi premiered on ABC, featuring Conaway as Bobby Wheeler, a cab driver and wannabe actor. Conaway left Taxi after three seasons, due in part to drug use. He was cut from an episode after being discovered in his dressing room, too intoxicated to perform. He was eventually let go from the show. Conaway continued to work consistently for the next 30 years, but mostly in B-movies and guest star gigs. In the mid-2000s, Conaway re-emerged on VH1, appearing on the network's weight loss competition Celebrity Fit Club in 2006. But he departed after three episodes and an on-screen breakdown. In 2008, the same year that he reportedly threatened members of the band Oasis with a knife, he returned to VH1 for Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew to seek treatment for substance abuse issues. Two years later, Conaway fell down a flight of stairs, enduring a brain hemorrhage and numerous broken bones. He attempted to wean himself off of the painkillers to which he'd become addicted after another earlier surgery. In May 2011, Conaway was found unresponsive in his home, with strong indications that the actor had overdosed on painkillers. After two weeks of hospitalization, Conaway was taken off of life support and died at age 60. One of the most popular wrestlers in the WWE Enterprise during its late 90s and early 2000s, Joni Lauer went by the ring name of China and helped make women's professional wrestling a popular form of sports entertainment. Nicknamed the ninth wonder of the world, she became the only woman to win WWE's Intercontinental Championship. She won the Women's Championship, too, before leaving wrestling altogether to pursue big-screen stardom. That didn't really pan out, but Lauer found plenty of work in the emerging genre of reality TV, appearing in numerous shows, including Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew, in hopes of getting a problem with alcohol under control. According to Fox News, Lauer was found deceased in her home in Redondo Beach, California in April 2016 by her manager, Anthony Ong Zaldo. Per a report issued by the Los Angeles County Medical Examiner, Lauer died after consuming a fatal mixture of alcohol, Valium, opioid-based painkillers, and sleeping pills. Lauer was 46 years old. As an actor in raunchy movies, a music video vixen, and celebrity strongly associated with the world of big-haired 1980s glam metal, Tawny Katane made a name for herself as a provocative sex symbol. She appeared scantily clad on the covers of albums by the popular hard rock band Rat, then solidified her spot in hair metal history when she cartwheeled and writhed on top of cars in the video for Whitesnake's number one hit, Here I Go Again. Katane appeared in the clip for the band's follow-up smash Smash is This Love, and later married White Snake singer David Coverdale. The marriage didn't last long, and Katane later coupled with baseball player Chuck Finley, who divorced the model after accusing her of domestic violence. In 2008, Katane appeared on Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew, which followed a stay at a residential treatment center to beat a cocaine habit. In 2019, per radar, Katane was arrested for driving under the influence, and her case was set to go before a judge in May 2021. Katane died in Newport Beach, California that same month. The actor was 59. Rodney King became famous across the United States not for something that he did, but for what was videotaped happening to him at the hands of the police. In March 1991, King was pulled over by California Highway Patrol officers for speeding. He later admitted that he was avoiding police because he'd been driving while intoxicated and was on probation for a robbery offense. But instead of being taken into custody peacefully, the responding officer savagely beat the unarmed King as he laid in the street, suffering serious injuries and incident captured on videotape. 
In April 1992, a jury acquitted the officers on every major offense, leading countless frustrated residents of Los Angeles to riot. As the third day of unrest charged on, King memorably appeared on TV and, on the verge of tears, implored, I just, I just want to say, you know, can we, can we all get along? Can we, can we get along? Sixteen years later, King appeared on TV once more, this time as part of the 2008 cast of Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew, seeking help for his years-long struggle with alcohol abuse. In June 2012, King's body was discovered in the swimming pool of his home in Rialto, California. According to the San Bernardino County Coroner, King drowned to death after entering a state of drug and alcohol-induced delirium. The coroner posited that he had either jumped into the pool or fallen in while impaired by the alcohol, cocaine, and PCP found in his body. He was 47 years old. When Nikki McKibben popped up on the first season of American Idol in 2002, she struck the image of a rock star with her colorful clothes and spiky pink hair. Voice-wise, McKibben was a bluesy, soulful rocker in the vein of Melissa Etheridge and Janis Joplin, whose song she performed during her American Idol stint. She finished in third place, behind Justin Guarini and champ Kelly Clarkson. Successfully thrust into the spotlight, McKibben released two albums, a self-titled collection in 2006 and the follow-up Unleashed a year later. After those back-to-back -back records, McKibben made headlines for a different reason when she joined the cast of Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew in 2008. McKibben told People that she believed she became addicted to the painkillers prescribed after numerous surgeries to correct herniated discs in her back. During the show, McKibben discussed the abuse she endured as a child, as well as the then-recent loss of her mother to addiction, and went through an unpleasant detoxification process from prescribed anti-anxiety medications. In late October 2020, McKibben suffered a brain aneurysm. Four days later, per the New York Times, she was taken off of life support in the Arlington, Texas hospital where she was being treated and died. McKibben was only 42 years old. In 1996, Mindy McCready was one of the biggest rising stars in country music, releasing the two million selling 10,000 Angels. Her follow-up album saw diminishing returns, and by the mid-2000s, McCready's personal issues made multiple tabloid headlines. In 2004, she was arrested for using a fraudulent prescription to acquire painkillers, and a few months later, was arrested for drunk driving. Not long after, people reported that she was hospitalized after her boyfriend broke into her house and attacked her. She made headlines again when she revealed a years-long affair with baseball player Roger Clemens. After multiple suicide attempts, she agreed to be part of season three of Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew, with stated addictions to alcohol and the painkiller OxyContin. After her time on the show, McCready's life remained troubled. She violated a custody agreement by skipping town with her son and, in early 2013, was admitted to a rehab facility in Arkansas. Shortly after her release, McCready committed suicide on February 17, 2013. A handful of bands from Seattle revolutionized rock music in the 90s with their industry-changing grunge sound, one of the chief groups among them being Alice in Chains. As the band's original bassist, Mike Starr was a big part of defining the band's sound, playing on the group's first two big releases, Facelift and Sap, before being fired over his drug use in 1993. Alice in Chains went dormant in 1996 after lead singer Elaine Staley overdosed and retreated into private life. Staley died after a long period of heroin addiction in 2002, and Starr is likely the last person to see him alive when both were in the throes of drug abuse. Starr explained the reasons for his own addiction struggles during his stint on Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew. I want to kill the pain inside me, because the medicine doesn't do it. After checking out of Celebrity Rehab, Starr was arrested in Salt Lake City in February 2011 on a drug charge and for missing a sentencing on another drug-related offense from 2003. A few weeks later, Starr's body was discovered in his Utah home. Per the musician's roommate, he'd been using methadone and anxiety medicines prior to his death at the age of 44. 
Joey Kovar lived so much of his adult life for all the world to see on reality television. In the 2008 Hollywood set season of MTV's The Real World, Kovar proved to be a fascinating individual. An ex-bodybuilder who wanted to be an actor, trying to move beyond a past that included abuse and addiction. His flirtation with castmate Brianna Taylor got sidelined when Kovar suffered a relapse and started drinking again, leaving the show for long periods of time to focus on his recovery. He came back to the show once more in the season finale and cast reunion, where he announced that he'd been sober for 10 months. However, less than a year later, Kovar sought more intensive treatment and joined the season 3 cast of Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew in 2009 in order to battle his persisting addictions. According to TMZ, in August 2012, Kovar was found dead in a friend's home in Chicago, Illinois. Authorities pronounced him dead at the scene at the age of 29. The Cook County Medical Examiner later ruled that the death was the result of opiate intoxication. As an actor with numerous credits that include small parts on 90s shows like Seventh Heaven, Jason Davis's face might not be immediately recognizable, but his voice is very familiar to people of a certain age. On four seasons of the Disney-produced Saturday morning cartoon Recess, as well as in various direct-to-video spin-offs and a feature film, Davis played Mikey Bloomberg, an excellent athlete and deep thinker who did a little poetry, ballet, and opera on the side. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Davis was the grandson of Marvin Davis, a Denver oil man who became a Hollywood executive when he bought 20th Century Fox. Jason Davis's grandmother Barbara became a prominent philanthropist, and the whole clan was raised in a life of wealth and luxury. Despite this seemingly charmed upbringing, Jason Davis also suffered from addiction. To help himself and others, he helped found an organization called Cure Addiction Now and appeared on Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew in 2010 to seek treatment for an addiction to opioids. The actor died in February 2020. The cause of death, according to the Los Angeles Medical Examiner, was an accidental and fatal overdose of the painkiller fentanyl. If you or someone you know is struggling with substance abuse and mental health, please contact SAMHSA's 24-hour national helpline at 1-800-662-HELP. That's 1-800-662-4357. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255.